All right. Well, you would think that a convicted kidnapper and attempted murderer may not be your best spokesperson for a movement, right? Uh, but that's what happened this weekend at London's Trans Pride event. Uh, and now some people are understandably concerned about this. Uh, Sarah Jane Baker is a trans activist who took to the stage on Saturday and advocated for punching turfs in the effing face. Um, I decided not to show you this video because we're just not sure how YouTube will react to it, whether or not uh, that would get us punished. Uh, but that is a exact quote that if you see any turfs, punch them in the effing face. She didn't say effing. Uh, they used the whole word. Um, TERF, you know, is an acronym for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. It's a fetishized academic way for saying a woman who does not accept men into their groups, biological men, and excludes them from biological spaces. Um, this is a call for violent misogyny. It's a call for violence against women because they have an opinion about their own spaces, biological women. So this is Sarah Jane Baker over the weekend with a megaphone. Um, do you notice anything about this besides the way this person looks that may be a cause for concern? We're going to get back to that. This is like one of those find me questions. Uh, uh, I mean, one thing I'm, I see notice is that not money of the crowd are even looking their way. Okay. Yes. Um, that is one thing. I also would like to point your attention to the Antifa flag, but we're going to circle back mm -hmm. around to that. Um, Sarah Jane Baker is seen here as a young man uh, when his name was Alan Baker, the violinist. Now, before transitioning in prison, Baker was convicted for kidnapping and torturing his stepmother's brother. So I guess step uncle uh, was only sentenced to nine years, but then had that sentence extended because while in a men's prison, he broke into another inmate's cell and tried to strangle him to death. Uh, then in 2017, while still in prison, Baker says that uh, he cut off his own testicles. I have no proof of that. And I did not look into it any further. You will forgive me for not. He said that he did that. Um, he also said while in prison, he dealt drugs and did sex work. But still in 2019, the government of England decided to start giving him estrogen and a 10,000 pound taxpayer funded sex reassignment surgery on taxpayer dollars. Uh, now, again, we're choosing not to show you the video where Baker says to find turfs and punch them in the face because it could get us punished on YouTube. But let's look at Baker again in this image and get a closer look at the Antifa flag. Uh, Antifa is a movement that, uh, unlike the QAnon piece that we just did, the media would very much like to pretend that Antifa doesn't exist because Antifa is an extremist left wing group and it is very real and it is violent. Uh, and they very much do want people who don't agree with their way of thinking to be punished with violence. Um, they think that words are violent, so they have to be violent. Um, again, this is someone who was able to speak and represent this group at the trans rally in London this weekend. Uh, here's a picture of the rally where hundreds, if not thousands came out to support trans rights. In fact, London mayor Sadiq Khan supported this event, but when asked about this, he said violence is never acceptable. And that was about it. Uh, now the metropolitan police said that they will investigate this formally. Um, you know, again, if a man a biological man in a crowded space says find biological women and punch them and advocates for violence and misogyny against women. What should happen? What is an appropriate thing to do if that person were not wearing a dress? What would we do? Um, you know, a related case about this kind of thing is when this actually did happen because of this language. Now, you might want to say it's just a rhetoric. They don't really mean it. Uh, it doesn't really happen. Well, it does. In 2017, a 61-year-old woman named Maria McLaughlin was assaulted by a trans person named Tara Wolf. This is said trans person, biological male, who came to this trans rally knowing that gender critical feminists would be there. McLaughlin was just there to take pictures, uh, but Tara Wolf decided to punch her in the face. Um, before leaving for the rally, Tara Wolf wrote on Facebook, I want to F up some turfs. They're no better than fascists. 
um, they meant it and they went out there and did it. This case went to court. And even though McLaughlin won the case and Wolf was found guilty of assault, I think she broke her nose or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it was like enough of an assault to take it to court. The judge reprimanded McLaughlin, the victim, for not referring to her assailant as a she. The judge also denied financial compensation because she would not use female pronouns for the male person who punched her in the face. So she was denied a, a, any kind of reparations or financial compensation because she continued to insist the person who just punched me was a male. And that makes a difference because if a female punches me, that will probably feel one way. But if a full grown man punches me, that's much different. I'm going to feel a whole lot different. I mean, of course, depending on the female, right? But um, this person was ass assaulted. Now, you would assume that Sarah Jane Baker, the person we talked about earlier, has some release conditions since that 30-year-old convic 30 30-year conviction was served. Um, is this a violation? Who knows? Uh, as for the trans rally organizers, they were asked, you know, hey, do you really want to have this violent thing be out there as something that represents you. Here is their statement. They don't really have a problem with it. Um, organizers said, Sarah and many others in our community hold a lot of rage and anger that they have the right to express um, that anger through their words. So this is appropriate anger. Um, again, you, you would also assume that men who call to punch women in the face would somehow face consequences in public life. Uh, but not if that man wears a dress and performs woman face. So we're taking bets on what the Met will do with this new investigation. Shocking enough that they opened it at all. So any thoughts on this, David? Oh, no, sorry. You're talking. I just so. no, no, no. I, I just I just feel like, you know, that the, the, it's just getting continued, continuing to get more and more dangerous because the physical threats are increasing. And, and I just feel like, you know, at the end of the day, like it's because of all this affirmation that they're getting, they're getting so affirmed by everybody. And there's this big group of people that keep affirming all of this stuff. And it's just making it worse because now they're feeling like they're bulletproof and, and can say and do whatever they want. And it's just going to continue to get more dangerous. So I'm, I, yeah. it, it freaks me out. Yes. Um, but I do think that it, it, it's the media's job, or at least us in the media to talk about sort mm -hmm. of all types of extremism. And Antifa is absolutely an extremist movement. Uh, it has a disproportionate m number of transgender members or people who are speaking on behalf of transgender. And that movement feels like violence is an, a, an acceptable way to react to wrong think. Um, and so soon the media will have to acknowledge that. I mean, even I was telling a friend of mine because I read Andy Ngo's book about Antifa. My friend's like, that's real. I thought it was just a right wing conspiracy or, you know, um, yeah, a right wing conspiracy. Like saying Antifa is like extreme. Yes, it's real. It's absolutely real. Well, and it's dangerous. What What's also frustrating is what you look at, like this movie that's out and what they're focused on is QAnon, QAnon, QAnon. They will go off on QAnon. They they will stop their bank accounts, Proud Boys, all that other stuff. Yeah. But they don't do anything like that to Antifa. And I would argue Antifa is worse because they actually go out and seek the violence. You know, most of the the Proud Boys stuff, the attacks and everything that have happened is, have been self defense against Antifa. Like so, it's like how are they not labeled the same and 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 criticized the same as QAnon or the Proud Boys and things like that? You don't hear their bank accounts getting closed down and stuff on Twitter. Yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I don't I don't know about right wing violence being uh, being a reaction. I mean, there's definitely oh, I'm not saying instigated all by, violence yeah. on both sides. Right. And they, yeah, they deserve equal consideration. Yeah. yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there are many accounts of the media just absolutely ignoring uh, Antifa related violence, Antifa related. Um, I mean, Antifa, you know, if the media really wanted to, it, Antifa could be a very scary boogeyman because of the, the sort of way that they, you know, bring umbrellas that they're trained to use, uh, everyday objects as violence. Um, for instance, like milkshakes made of cement type of things, uh, you know, the covering of the faces, the sort of, 
um, yeah, that there's a lot to be afraid of in, in, in this, in equal measure of any extremist movement. Uh, but the media doesn't want to. Um, so, you know, is this a, a worth a segment of the, just somebody screaming, you know, let's punch them all in the face. Is it like, oh, well, they're just saying that, or is it indicative of our, uh, you know, requiring our attention because it is rallying. I mean, when she says this in the video, we're choosing not to show you, um, people cheer like, yes, absolutely. We are for this, right? You well, would that, hope that if it were a peaceful movement, people would be like, well, no, not that, right? We're talking about human rights issues here. We're not a violent movement. This is not what we stand for, but know that there was full throated cheers. And I was going to say, like, imagine if so someone attacked, um, JK Rowling, they would be cheering that on because she's like, she's like the queen turf at this point. And, yes. and they would be cheering that on. And that would be a good thing to, to a lot of those people. And that just like, that's one of the things I'm talking about that freaks me out. It's like, it's, it's moving toward that. I think that if any of them saw her out, fortunately, she's kind of a recluse in a way, I think, um, that they would do that to her. And, and I think that that's only going to get worse. The more that, that, that they get that kind of reaction from people They're like, Oh, we're bulletproof. We, we're not getting any flack. We're not getting any, everybody's like celebrating the fact that we're calling for violence. Yeah. Um, someone in the chat started with a Y just pointed out that Antifa has roots in, uh, Nazi Germany. And that's true. Um, this is absolutely true. And it's worth us. It's worth our attention. You know, like QAnon is like, oh, so funny, throw away extremist nuts. Like, it, again, all extremism um, well, and I, is I, I centered around, them, it, it requires our attention. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I refer to them as Clan Tifa because I just feel like it's a different colored robe is all it is. Because it's the same thing. You know, yeah. At the end of the day, it's the, it's the same mentality as the Klan. Yes. Yeah, very much so. I'm thinking of a, uh, this story that... Um, Andy No tells in his book, I can't remember the name of the book right now. Uh, he, he tells tells about this guy who like divorces his wife. They have a small child, uh, you know, and is really substance addicted, ends up having an affair with someone in his uh, another man in the Antifa group and then decides that he is either gay or transgender or some like form of that highly anxietized can't function in normal conversations without bringing up these extremist theories, uh, you know, like paranoid and anxietized and, and then ended up uh, having some kind of shootout at a school um, because had been radicalized all the way down, like through this tunnel of sexual deviance and in through this extremism. And yeah, th these stories, you know, you can sort of make a parallel of extremists on both sides of like someone who just no longer can function in society without being obsessed with their conspiracies and their theories and their, you know, sort of new life paradigms and feels like everyone is screwed because they can't see what they see. Um, you can make this parallel on both sides. And uh, if, if the media just chooses a side, right, then we're we're equally in danger so uh let us know what you think of this in the chat i do recommend the book um uh the andy no book on on that um and and it was interesting because i didn't know about this q and on book of the the person we did in the previous segment and i was like well maybe i should read that too like i'm i'm interested in learning about you know all types of extremists but I don't think I could buy that guy's book now that he's told us that like child trafficking is not worthy of our attention. So uh, if you have a different book on a QAnon that you think I should read, I'll read it. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.